Ebony in a corner here with a brief discussion regarding women and their wigs. From the glory days of ancient Egypt to the present day Hollywood starlet, many women and their wigs are nearly inseparable. Since their inception, wigs have been a symbol of status and privilege. From actual human hair to synthetic fibers, there is a wig for everyone. Even men, such as many among our founding fathers, as well as their predecessors, would sport powdered wigs as a fashion denoting power, position, prestige. So why now, all of a sudden, are men taking issue with women wearing wigs? Dear men, so long as a woman keeps her actual hair clean and healthy, you should not concern yourself so much with wigs and hair units as an adornment. Is this false advertisement? And as much as a padded bra and makeup could be, I suppose, yes. I prefer to call it bait and beauty. After all, any woman you get to know is eventually going to share with you her actual hair, her natural hair, by the time you've earned the station of nearness to her. If she is a woman you plan to go on only a few dates with, why does it matter if her hair is a wig or not? Why does it matter if your teacher, barista, librarian, or nurse wears her natural hair or hair that is weaved into her own? Why the curiosity? Why the discussions? Why the sneering? Why the smirking? Why the jeering? This microwavable insta-culture is a strange thing where people demand to know every detail about a person they have no intention on retaining long-term. You should only concern yourself with the hair of your own women, meaning your wife, your mother, your girlfriend, daughter, aunt, etc. Wigs are as practical as they are beautiful. Sure, some people overdo it with the glue and the tape. But you could also consider a wig something of a hair hat. Having a bad hair day? Wear a hat. Is that hat unfit for your intended setting? Wear a wig. Put it on when you leave the house. Take it off when you get home. Just as the Hasidic Jewish women do for religious purposes. They keep their real hair private only for their family to see, and particularly their husbands. Wigs actually keep us as women from damaging our hair. On a whim, we may want to go blonde or ombre a collection of colors into our hair. Bleaching and dyeing hair will often dry it out to the point of breakage. It is so much better to have a wig modeled into the desired style, length, and color, to wear that and protect what is underneath. My partner is not an, he is not at all a fan of fake hair. However, because my real hair is, you know, it comes about down to the middle of my back and I wear it in the bedroom for him to enjoy. So because of that, he could care less what I do with wigs. Underneath my wigs, I style my hair into two Native American looking braids. I put on a wig cap and then my wig. When I know he is coming to see me, I hang that wig up and take down my fresh smelling beach wavy hair lent to me by those braids for his entertainment. This keeps me from dealing so much in my hair that it causes me to trim often. Those of us women who have Afro textured hair, something like, I would say the categories type three hair, type four hair, Too much hair manipulation can lead to single strand knots and of course split ends that we end up having to cut off. So many times there is this impression that African American women cannot grow hair, but in reality it is a delicate art form to grow and to maintain and beautify African American hair. Some people have the skill and some people don't. For some people it's a learning curve and for some they will never learn, even if they were born with that texture of hair. So it behooves them to wear a wig or a weave and keep their real hair styled very simply. 
If you like a woman with long hair or have a preference for a woman with long hair, the truth is she's going to need to leave her real hair alone for a while to grow it long and healthy. Oftentimes, that could mean buns and braids, Princess Leia, if you will. Um, maybe the way that I style my hair under my wigs, the two braids. And that's not nearly impressive or as eye-catching, I would say, as luxurious locks of hair flowing in the wind as a woman walks. I mean, there's a there's an obvious difference. And, and so many beauty, you know, hair commercials, beauty commercials, you see that woman with that hair down, long and flowing. And not often do you see that same woman, you know, in a bun. That's like a power hairstyle for a woman, right? To pull back your hair and to put it in a bun means business. Whereas when people want you to be fun, fancy free, and romantic, they say, hey, let your hair hang down, right? Let your hair down and enjoy yourself. So growing a long hair is, um, especially for us with Afro textured hair, I know myself, when I went natural, I had to keep my hair up for two years. And the wisdom behind keeping my hair up for two years is this. The African-American hair texture will break off at the rate of growth if you allow it to sit on your shoulders with the shirts that are made out of anything but satin or silk. So whether it's your cotton scarf, a uh, neck scarf, head scarf, headband, shirt made of wool or polyester, any kind of fabric that will suck up oil or suck up moisture will inevitably make your African American hair dry to the point of single strand knots and breakage. So when my hair got back to shoulder length, I put it up for the next two years until it grew down to my bra strap. And now, sure, I can wear my hair down all of the time, but at this point, it's so much hair. Why would I want to? If I'm not trying to impress my partner, I try to leave my hair up because that's the healthiest way to keep it nice and soft. So many times when you're dealing with Afro-textured hair, you're dealing with hair that is very smooth for the first maybe six, seven, or eight inches. But if that hair is 13 inches long, then maybe the last three to four inches is rough. And so for my partner, when he plays in my hair, it's important to me to keep my hair very soft. And wigs help me to do that. You'd be surprised at what some of us women, especially Afro-American women, have hiding up under our wigs. Most of us have anything but a bald head. I know that's the assumption and I understand why that could be the assumption. And there's nothing, I have nothing against women who do have a bald head or very short hair. But oftentimes, I know for me personally, my hair is longer than every hair unit that I own right now. And I know many other women whose case is similar. The wig helps them to preserve their hair. It's easier to throw on a wig for a Zoom meeting or Skype meeting than it is to wash, blow dry, flat iron, and curl your actual hair. That takes hours, whereas a wig depending on what kind of wig you, you have selected, that can take just minutes. So we want you to understand this as men. The other conversation that I wanted to have, which is not as easy, is that sometimes it appears that men... Correct me if I'm wrong, but it appears that the anti-makeup, anti-wig talk, that there's a level of sabotage in that. As in women beautifying themselves, beginning to think that they're uppity or high acidity, highfalutin, better than you because of the men that they're attracting with those looks. And so it seems to me that there is this movement to keep us out of these hairstyles in order to humble us and keep us with a certain class of men, to keep us uh, accessible to a lower class of men and basically unattractive to a higher class of men. So... And when I say higher class of men, I'm obviously not referring to the red weaves and the blue weaves and the pink wigs and the orange rainbow colored things, even though I'm a unicorn, right? Horns up. But um, I would just say, don't make yourself the enemy of women beautifying themselves. 
We do this for us, but we also do this for you. Up at a unicorn and a mouth.